So I hope everyone's doing well and staying sane. Um, it is a little bit of a different type of class, I guess, because I'll be demonstrating a lot. Some of you, I can see alignment. I, some of you, I can't quite, and depending on if you have video on or off, but of course, that's up to you, right? So just to give you a little kind of preview, if you are new to my class, let me grab my blocks here. And if you have blocks, please grab them, but um, if you don't have blocks, that's okay. You can just do the best that you can. And so, also if you have a strap, that can be nice. If you don't have a strap, a belt can work fine. And uh, let's see, this seems to kind of spread out. So I was teaching a few, probably on social media, great, if not, that's okay. But I've been working with teaching um, this week with the shape of Warrior Three. So if you know that shape, it's kind of like a, a T shape, right? And it's like if this were the leg, it's very perpendicular to the standing leg. But we're working on different shapes. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to get all of them. But say, for example, I just want to kind of point out before we start that this is like an upside down warrior three, right? So, of course, it's different because we're on the back. But if you flip this perfectly upside down, this would be your warrior three. So, let's just start on the back. And uh, we'll just let the knees point up to the ceiling. And if you can unmute yourself, that would be great, right? Just do not have background noise coming in. Elbows on the floor, hands on the belly. And we'll just take a nice deep breath in through the nose. And exhale through your nose. Breathing in. And breathe out. And just really start to feel grounded, right? Let's feel the earth really supporting us. And we're just gonna take a moment to expand both arms out to the sides. Shoulder blades nicely connected to the floor. If you really reach the arms out, right? You're gonna maybe even a stretch for the inner arms. So if you come to my regular class when we're actually in person, you kind of know the style of my Alain Vinyasa. If you're new to this style, it can be a bit different from what you're used to. It's considered to be a bit more intense, but I just want to stress, do your very best. If you sweat, that's great. That's part of the process. So we're just going to hug the right knee into the chest. So get a nice stretch behind your right thigh. And then here's where we're going to just warm up behind the hamstrings as we extend the right leg up. Now, you can either hold on behind your right thigh or take your strap and better for you or your belt. And it's like you're stepping on the ceiling. So even I, you know, I'm trying to really mimic the warrior three shape. So technically, I wouldn't really want to draw the leg too much towards my chest, right? So a lot of this is really geometry that we're doing with the body. So it's like you're stepping on the ceiling. Right leg is super vertical. If it's okay with your left leg, extend that long too. Now here's the thing, kind of like a moment of truth. We're trying to keep our back very flush to the floor. If you have to bend your right knee a little bit, totally fine. So, say you have to bend your right knee. Remember, when this is flipped upside down, this is your warrior three. So, it might be that when you're in a regular warrior three, standing upright balancing, that your standing leg has to also bend. So, our hamstrings are connected to certain back muscles, lower back muscles. If you find that forcing your leg straight here just doesn't feel so great and or your back kind of pops up, not so good. Melt your back onto the floor, even if that means bending the right knee. So two more breath cycles, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhaling. 
and exhaling. And then we're just going to bend the right knee. You can let go of the strap if you have it. And then let's hug the left knee into the chest. Let's take a full breath in. Full breath out. And we're going to bring both feet to the floor. Take a moment, settling both feet down. And then from here, we'll again, just make sure the back is really flush to the floor. And then we'll hug the left knee into the chest. To notice what might be happening around your collarbones and your shoulder blades. Again, this is kind of a tendency where people might do this if you can see what my neck is doing. You know, we really want to try to have the back of the neck, the cervical spine, pretty long. So just like a tadasana for mountain pose. And then we'll extend the left leg long. Again, feel free to hold on behind your thigh or if you prefer the strap, this can also work. Very vertical left leg. And then again, optional to extend the right leg. So again, upside down warrior three. This is also called hand to foot pose, right? Or Padahadustasana or Supta Padahadustasana. Um, sometimes we'll take this pose and grab the big toe. But again, the strap is fine. Also notice if you have to bend the left knee, way better to do this with a nice long back than to force the leg straight if you start doing funky stuff with the back. Two more deep breaths, inhaling. And exhaling. Inhale. And exhale. Remember the feeling of the floor. Again, of course, it's going to be hard to mimic exactly, but this is the ideal structure we want when we take this into warrior three later on. So we'll hug the left knee back in, right knee as well. Take a full breath in, full breath out. And then we'll just kind of rock our way up to sit. You might like to take two or three to rock and rolls. Lifting our way up to sit here. And then we'll just inhale both arms up. Right there. And then exhale, hand the heart center. You feel free to set an intention. And just inhale both arms up. We start with Hastasana as we sit in Sukhasana. And then exhale, take a twist to your right. And keep reaching up through the crown of the head. Use your inhalation to lengthen and tall. And then just use your exhalation to twist. Inhale, lengthen and grow. And the exhale is for that twisting quality. Just one more. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale to twist. We'll inhale both arms up. Think of really lifting your rib cage up away from the pelvis. And then we'll exhale, twist left. So we'll inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Right, so they might not be huge movements, but you're inhaling for that lengthening quality, vertical, vertically getting taller. Exhale for that twisting component. Now, ideally, your pelvis is really even. One more breath in. And we'll stay for the breath out. We'll inhale both arms up. Let's just exhale, bow forward. Try to keep your seat connected, meaning the sitting bones are rooted into the floor. So sometimes when action happens, right? And to get a nice stretch in your lower back and your glutes, keep your feet down. Now, on Zoom, I do hear somebody so if everyone can make sure that they're on mute. That would be distracting. So, make sure the device. And then we'll just make our way over onto all fours, right? So, however you need to get there, we're going to come into a nice tabletop. So, Let's root the knuckles down nicely. And again, we're really moving with the breath. Right? So we're going to inhale to a cow pose. 
Belly dips, heart lifts up. Exhale, round your back, cat pose. Inhale, arch up, cow. We're going to exhale, round the back for cat. Just two more like that. Inhale, and cow. Exhale, round for cat. One more, inhale, inhale. And just exhale, round the back for cat. Let's inhale to the neutral spine. We're going to bring the big toes to touch, knees wide, child's pose. So we're going to really reach both arms long in this variation of child's pose. All right, if you can, your forehead is down on the floor. And just try to get a nice open quality for your chest. Now you can take child's pose at any point during the class, right? Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale and exhale. One more breath in. And we'll stay for the breath out. And then we're just gonna tuck the toes, send the hips up again for your downward facing dog. So seat nice and high. And we're just gonna inhale the right leg up. Right, so this is our down dog split. Some people call this one legged dog. Now we're gonna stack the hip and bend the knee. So try your best to point the right knee up to the ceiling. Again, you know, no forcing, just do the best you can. We are pressing the chest towards the thigh as opposed to this action, right? So think of chest towards the thigh. We're gonna inhale straight to the right leg, re-square the hips. Now a little bit of belly work. Exhale, knee to nose, we're shifting forward, right and hovering. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, knee to nose. One more. Inhale, right leg high. Now use your exhale to place the right foot forward in between the hands. So if it didn't quite make it, right, I always say sometimes your foot ends up back here. Try your best not to leave it there. We want the sole of the right foot to be flush with the floor. So right ankle underneath right knee, and then allow your pelvis to melt. If you need blocks and you have blocks, use them. So the thing with this low lunge, you know, we're trying to get a bit of a stretch in this left hip flexor. If you poke the hips up too high, it's not really happening so much, right? So we definitely want to melt pelvis down and let's really express the heart center forward. And take another breath in. We're going to exhale, left knee to the floor, point your back foot, right hand, right thigh, inhale, left arm up. So we're going to use our right hand, right, to kind of help us lift in the heart center. Keep breathing. The variation on a crescent moon. We're just going to inhale, left hand inside the right foot. Float the right arm up for a twist. Nice and open in the collarbones. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. And perhaps you twist a little deeper as you breathe. We're going to inhale both hands down so you're framing your front foot. Now again, if you like to use your blocks, go right ahead. We're going to tuck the left of the toes. Just fold over the front. Now this is an excellent stretch for your hamstrings. Take a moment, really breathe here. Now again, I teach aligned vinyasa, so we're pretty specific about the hips and things like that. Um, in this type of pose, because the left leg is back, the left hip tends to poke back, right? If you can see that. 
Try to square the hips. So you want to draw left hip forward and even down. Ideally, your pelvis is super symmetrical. So again, this is geometry. We are attempting to perform with the body. Now the same way our left kneecap is facing forward and the left set of toes are facing forward is the same way our left kneecap and left set of toes are going to eventually face the floor as we transition. So we're going to bend the right knee. You can maybe lift your blocks. You can also just be on fingertips. But we're going to lift left leg up, supporting warrior three. Now remember that shape we just did on the back when we were on the floor. We'll try to get a 90 degree angle with both legs. Now, if you're super flexible in the hamstring, sure, maybe you do keep the right straight. But remember that floor underneath us. You want to avoid opening the hip. If you're on the floor, you can't unsquare the hips, right? Because the floor is shaping it. Try to mimic that. So now the ceiling is your floor. If you'd like, you can bring the arms alongside the body. Right, so notice how it's hard, right? Of course, it's a bit different, but we are basically trying to mimic this shape upside down. So wherever you are, two more breath cycles. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. We're going to inhale both hands down. Let's step back, downward facing dog. Connect your hips high, sitting bones high, chest moving toward your thighs, full breath in. Make your shoulders moving away from the ears, breathe out. I often have to remind myself, right, it's a common tendency, a lot of us flare the ribs too far forward, including myself. Sometimes we just kind of have to gently kind of bring the side ribs up, right, think of the bottom rib cage, Getting a little closer to the top of the pelvis. And we're going to inhale, roll it out, plank pose. Keep looking forward, stay for the exhale. Now, if it's too much, guys, you can do modified plank with knees on the floor. Breathe in, which is different from tabletop, it's not this. Breathe out. Okay, you're still using your core. One more breath in. Able to spine, hips are not too high nor too low. Let's exhale, big knees, or rather, big toes touch knees. Separate, child pose, full breath in, full breath out, inhale, and exhale, one more breath in, and stay, fourth breath out, let's tap the toes, send the hips up, Downward facing dog. We're going to inhale left leg high this time, right? So notice how this is square hips. Sometimes we'll do this with square hips intentionally, which is really more of your warrior three hip alignment. But right now I'm asking you to stack the hip, which is really more of the artisan jaw center or half moon hip alignment. Bend the left knee. Okay, so you get a good stretch in the left quadriceps, full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, straighten your left leg. Let's re-square the hips. And then exhale, knee to nose. Shift forward and cover. Really press your palms nice into the floor. Inhale, left leg high, chest does move back. Exhale, knee to nose. One more, inhale, left leg high. And then we're gonna exhale, plant left foot forward. Again, in between the hands as far as you can, just as you need. Use blocks if you need. But keep breathing. And then just a friendly reminder, less of this kind of action, more allowing the pelvis to surrender to gravity. Right, so think of a nice long line from your right heel to the torso to the crown of the head. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Let's inhale, right knee down, point your back foot. Left hand to left thigh. So use your hands a little bit of pressure, right? So that'll help you get a good stretch in the right front thigh. 
So a muscle in your lower right abdominals, maybe. Keep breathing here. We'll inhale, right hand down. And then just lift. Left arm up for twist. Inhale through the nose. Nice energy in the arm. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. Stay for your breath in. We're going to inhale, left hand down, maybe on the blocks. Tuck your right set of toes. And then that pyramid variation where all 10 toes face forward. Okay, so there is a part of Tanasana where we do purposely externally rotate the right leg, right? But we're not doing that here. Both femur bones or thigh bones are in neutral rotation. That's another couple of breaths. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through your nose. Inhale. And exhale. Now think of the same rotation in those femur bones. Inhale, bend your left knee. And then we're just going to exhale right leg up. Again, supported where you're through. So maybe blocks are on a higher height. So even if you want to take a very quick peek at me, again, it's a challenge. This is not what I should be doing with my right hip. I really want to drop the right hip so that it matches the left hip. I even have to drop it more. Sometimes it means I need to bend the left knee. So again, we're trying to mimic that same shape. Supine hand to foot pose where you're on the back. Try maybe, sometimes you have to drop the right hip even more. And yes, we are using the muscles behind the right leg. Not the outer thigh. If you can, bring those arms alongside the body. Keep expressing the heart center forward. Keep breathing. We'll inhale, both hands down. Just step it back, Adho Your down dog. Full breath in. Full breath out. We'll inhale, roll it out, plank pose. Stay for the exhale. So we're looking forward on the floor, right? Not down the body. Also be mindful we're not cranking the neck, looking up. So the only thing with doing yoga with screens, just be mindful your alignment in the neck is still good here. Can't always look at the screen every single pose. Take another breath in. Exhale, knees wide. Big toes touch, follow us down. Inhale through the nose. Nice and giant breaths, exhale. So some of you may notice, but in vinyasa, we definitely a bit more, you know, intentional with our ujjayi breath. You're inhaling through the nose. And then there's also that sound when you exhale. Inhaling. And so it's like you're sighing through the nose, exhale. One more breath in. And we'll stay for the breath out. We'll tuck the toes. And just send your hips up, Adho Mukha Shanasana, down. So we're really rooting all the knuckles nicely into the air. Take a nice breath in. Then exhale, let's just very slowly walk the feet forward to the top of your mat. So guys, again, please make sure that you are on mute. Forward here. You need to soften the knees a little bit. Totally fine. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Good. One more breath in. And then exhale as you slowly roll your way up to stand. All right, so we're gonna roll our way up. This is Tadasana, elbow length up and down. We'll inhale, arms up, high prayer. And then exhale, just hands at the heart center. Take a moment, full breath in. You might even come back to your intention, breathe out. So we're gonna inhale, arms high, Urdhva Hastasana. 
And then exhale as you fold forward, Uttanasana. Let's inhale right foot behind, low lunge. Now we're going to exhale left foot back down dog. This is kind of a part of vinyasa. We're inhaling plank pose. Exhale, bend the elbows just a little. Chest is still parallel to the floor. Inhale back through plank. Exhale, hips up, down dog. We're going to inhale, step the right foot forward, top of your mat. Exhale, left foot to match. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, refold. Inhale, arms up, high prayer. Exhale, hands, heart to center. Inhale, arms up. You are working with your breath. Exhale, forward to Tanasana. Inhale, left foot behind, low line. You're stepping way back. Exhale, right foot back, down facing dog. Use your inhale, roll out to plank, big Tadasana, right in terms of the alignment of your back. Exhale, chaturanga, nothing changes except the bending of the elbows. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. Some people even call it low plank. Inhale back to high plank. Exhale, hips high, down dog. Inhale, step the left foot forward, top of your mat. Exhale, right foot to match. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, refold. Inhale, arms higher, Vahastasana. Exhale, hands, heart to the center. One more round. Inhale, arms high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, right foot behind the lunge. Exhale, left foot back down dog. This time we're going to add in the upper facing dog. So you inhale, plank pose. Use your exhale, lower chaturanga. A little different this round. Inhale, upper facing dog. This is the back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Technically a forward bend. Inhale, step the right foot forward. Exhale, left foot to match. Inhale, flat back, spread your collarbone. It's okay if your hands need to lift. Exhale, refold. Inhale, arms higher, Bahasdasana. Exhale, hands, heart to the center. Inhale, arms high. And again, exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, left foot behind the lunge. Exhale, right foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank pose. Chest is parallel to the floor. Exhale, shut around. The chest is still parallel to the floor. It is not lifted. Then we inhale, up dog. Now it does lift. Exhale, lift hips, down dog. Inhale, step, left foot forward, top of your mat. Exhale, right foot to match. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, refold. Inhale, arms up, high prayer. Exhale, down, front, center. Take a moment, full breath in. Exhale, arms alongside the body, breathe out. So again, as I keep mentioning, a lot of this is geometry, more important with the body, right? Kind of architecture. So in this mountain pose, there's a lot of information here. It's like we're trying to get a lot of this structure in our warrior three, right? The only difference is we're lifting like in this case, for example, one leg would be lifted. This is the same shape. So let's just take a moment here. Feel how your hips, notice if your hips are back or forward. Try to get a very neutral pelvis. And shoulders release away from the ears. Full breath in. Full breath out. Full inhale, arms high. Now let's interlace those last three fingers, right? So we're going to let the index, right, point up. Just notice that there. We'll take a breath in. Exhale, tip to your right. Full breath in. We'll stay full breath out. Inhale up through center. And exhale, tip left. Inhale. This is our boomerang pose. If your arms are bent, Try your best to straighten them, breathe out. 
Inhale back to center. Then exhale, swan dive forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back, heart up, Uttanasana. And we'll exhale, three fold. So we're gonna inhale right foot behind, low lunge again. Exhale, left foot back, down facing dog. Take a moment to pause, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, right leg high, bend that split. Exhale, open up the hip, bend the right knee, full breath in, full breath out. We're gonna inhale, straighten the right leg. Do not tap the square of the hips this time. Exhale, knee to outer right arm. Inhale, right leg high. This time we're exhaling, knee to nose. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, knee to outer left arm. Inhale, right leg high. And then we're gonna exhale, place the right foot forward and through in between the hands. So your right foot is a little bit right, left foot is a little bit left. And then we're gonna inhale, arms up. So we just wanna be mindful that our feet are supporting our hips. So sometimes people's stance is just a little too narrow, but you wanna think of your feet on train tracks as opposed to say a typo. And just allow yourself to be supported in the hips. Two more deep breaths, inhale through the nose. Exhale through your nose. Inhale. And exhale. So here, we're just gonna inhale, straighten the right leg. Exhale, re-bend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, re-bend. One more, inhale, straighten. We're gonna exhale, re-bend and pause. So navel hugs to spine, inhale, hinge forward. Let's call the asana, stay for the exhale. Breathe in. Exhale, low hands to the floor, and we're gonna lengthen and hold. If you ever want a deeper stretch, maybe flex your right foot a little bit. Deep breathing. On your next exhale, bend your right knee. And then we're just going to inhale, arms up. I watch. Take a nice breath in. And then we're going to exhale, transition. Here we draw a set. Try to look over your right hand. Now, a lot of times, because we're looking over the right hand, this action happens with the chest. The chest facing your left wall, even though you're looking over the right hand. Okay, nice deep breaths here, inhaling and exhaling. Inhale and exhale. One more breath in. Maybe lunge a little deeper as you breathe out. Inhale, straighten your right leg. And then flip your right palm, we're gonna tip back, peaceful triangle. So we're getting a really nice stretch in the right side body. And so I think we may have some new people that have joined in, which is perfectly fine. But again, I just ask that you uh, mute yourselves on your device, because it kind of causes a little bit of static for other people to hear. So just you know, make sure you are on mute. We'll inhale up through center. Now we're gonna exhale, crease the right hip back. So we're gonna try to have a very long waist. Now I know this is easier said than done, you know, but what can happen is sometimes people start to round the waist and it's like they're reaching and they're kind of, you know, stressing. It's okay if your hand needs to be high. This is some people's triangle pose. Yes, 
Some people can bring the right hand lower. However, I just wanna point out, not if you're compromising the alignment where it's like you're doing this. Sometimes people will be here in triangle pose because they think the purpose is to reach the floor, but it's not. It's really, you know, more about right rib cage above the right thigh. Now, if you need to look forward, that's okay. Some people need to look down. Others might be happy looking up. So really rooting nicely through the feet, inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose, inhale, and exhale. Now we're going to inhale, come on back, Veer Vajrasana, two, nice bend in that right knee, inhale, and exhale. We'll flip the right palm, inhale, tip it back. Peaceful warrior. And then we're going to exhale, windmill hands back around to the floor, low lunge. But you kind of have to spin up that left heel, right? So you end up in your nice low lunge. And we're going to inhale back, plank pose. And then exhale, side pose. So we're going to stack left leg on top of right leg, left arm up. So if you can stack the legs, great. If this is too intense for anybody, left foot can go to the floor. Other options are right knee to the floor. Nice modified Bhashti Stasana. You're using your core, and again, with alignment, less poking the butt back and chest forward. If anything, it's the opposite. Think of moving your pelvis forward, leaning your chest back. Two more breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. We'll inhale left hand to the floor. Let's all exhale, child's pose. So we're gonna have nice long arms here. And then we're gonna walk the arms over to the left. So what we're essentially trying to do is really lengthen and stretch out the right side body that we just strengthened in our side plank. Another couple of deep breaths. We're going to inhale those arms back to center. And then exhale, tuck your toes. Send your hips up, down dog. Right now, if you do not like taking everything else up, that's up to you. Some people prefer to be staying down dog or rest in child's pose. You do have those options. If you're going for the full on intense vinyasa, we would inhale plank pose. Remember, chest is parallel to the floor. Exhale, chat around the dasana, chest is still parallel to the floor. Inhale, we're going to move Vashkanasana, lift in the heart center. Exhale, out of Vashkanasana, lifting in your hips. And so we'll inhale, bend both knees, lift your gaze, your choice. You can hop, float, step. I'm going to choose just to walk to the top of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, refold. Inhale, arms up high, prayer. Exhale, hands heart center. Right, so earlier I had little stick figures drawn. Um, if you can just picture, again, that shape, right? So if you were here at the beginning of class, this was how we started. So for those of you that might have joined a little later, this is essentially an upside down warrior three. We did our warrior three, but we're also going to have to take a different orientation. So grab your strap if you have it. And we're going to just bring it around. Uh, we're going to bring it around actually the right foot, the sole of the right foot. Again, same shape, different orientation. We're lifting right leg up, reaching out to the crown of the head. Again, this technically is a warrior three, but we call it hand to foot pose but it essentially is the same shape. So now the wall behind you is what the floor was before and what the ceiling was in our order three. And again, it's hard if you lose your balance, right? No big deal. It's just you're trying to have fun with it. Again, this is another shape where you might have to bend this, this, this lifted leg, especially the lifted leg. If you can do a straight leg, great. But it's okay if your knees bent. Keep your focus. 
another breath in. Exhale, release right foot down. You can let go of your strap. Take a moment, feel grounded to your feet. Inhale. Keep reaching up for the crown of your head. Exhale. The same sequence on your side. Inhale, arms high. Now we're gonna exhale, interlace last three fingers. So again, index and thumb are up. Now if you can help it, you're gently, gently squeezing your head. Again, avoid this. We're trying to have long arms. And then tip to your left. Full breath in. Stay full breath out. Inhale up through center. Exhale to break. Inhale. Stay for your exhale. Inhale, center. Exhale, swan dive forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back, guard of Uttanasana. And exhale, refold. So you're gonna inhale, left foot behind, low lunge. Exhale, right foot back, down dog. Like right, sitting bones nice and high, full breath in. Shoulders away from the ears, bring it out. So this time, we'll inhale left leg high. Exhale, open up the hip, bend the left knee, full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, straighten the left leg. Now we're engaging our abdominals as you exhale, left knee, out of left arm. Inhale, left leg high, do the best you can. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, knee out or right up. We'll inhale, left leg high again. And then exhale, plant left foot forward in between the hands. So try to get that ankle under the knee. Your shin bone is very vertical, right perpendicular to the floor. Friendly reminder, not a tightrope pattern with your feet, but rather a train track pattern with your feet. Inhale, arms up. High lunge. Keep breathing. Now it's okay if your back knee has to bend a little. People have a tendency in this pose to hook the tailbone back and pinch forward, but do your very best to maintain a vertical uh, torso. Keep your focus. We're going to inhale straighten the left leg. Exhale, rebend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, we bend. Inhale, straighten. Now we're gonna exhale, we bend and pause. Your left knee is bent. Inhale, hinge forward, Dayasana here. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, both hands to the floor, four blocks. Exhale, lengthen and fold. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. One more breath in. Stay for your breath out. Take a breath in. And then exhale, bend your left knee. So we're going to inhale, arms back up, high lunge. We'll call this high crescent. Exhale, transition open, your Vajrasana two. So remember, even though we are looking over the left hand, try not to let it make the chest face the floor. Your chest, it's as if your chest is really flush against this wall. Arms are out, we're looking forward. Sometimes it's even nice to practice poses this way to help you with the alignment in your chest. All right, chest is parallel to uh, your right wall. Two more deep breaths, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Now let's inhale, straighten our left leg. Flip the left palm, tip it back. Peaceful triangle. Let's we'll call it reverse triangle. It's almost like a reverse warrior. It's just that our left leg is straight. Try to get a nice lengthening side body stretch here for your left side. 
You're going to inhale up. Exhale, crease your left hip back, trickle nasana. Okay, so think of your rib cage aligning above your left thigh in this case. We're trying to form one long line with both arms, right? Just do the best you can. Think of a vertical line with both arms. Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale and exhale. We'll inhale back up to warrior two. Take the exhale, nice lunge in that left leg, breathe in. Square chest to your right wall, breathe out. Lift your left palm, inhale, tip back. Peace forward. Exhale, windmill hands back around to the floor, low lunge. So again, spinning the right heel up. You might have to wiggle the left leg over slightly just to make a nice transition. As you inhale, left leg back, plank pose. Exhale, right arm up, Vashti Stasana side plank. Now again, if this is too much, drop your left knee. Maybe drop your right foot. If you have wrist issues, perhaps you lower the forearm, right? Some people still want to do this pose, but maybe they modify with the forearm on the floor, which in some ways can present a different type of challenge. Keep breathing. We'll inhale, right hand down, plank. Exhale, knees wide, child's pose. Super long arms, breathe in. Exhale, both arms way, way over to the right. Full breath in through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. If you don't feel much of a stretch, guys, make sure that you are really extending through the left arm over to the right. Breathe out. Inhale, arms back to center. Just exhale, find your way back on up. Baramukha Shvanasana, full breath in, full breath out, right? So if you're working up a sweat, that's great. Inhale, plank pose. If you're choosing this vinyasa, exhale, chaturanga, work with parallel arms. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Shvanasana. Exhale, Mata Mukha Shvanasana. Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, bend both knees. Again, yogi's choice. You can step, hop, float, or simply walk to the top of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, three fold. Inhale, arms high, or Hastasana. Exhale, hands for center. Take a moment, standing tall, full breath in. Full exhale, arms alongside the body, breathe out. So grab your strap, we're gonna take the other side, standing hand to foot pose, unless you absolutely wanna do it with your peace fingers wrapped around your big left toe, which is an option. It's not exactly always that warrior feel line we're trying to do, but you know, the idea is to keep your right leg Vertical as possible, and then left leg as horizontal as possible. Now, you know, if you lose your balance, like I just did, it happens, no big deal. Pretend you're leaning against a wall behind you. Right, so again, we're trying to kind of mimic this capital letter T shape, if you will. Keep looking forward. It's okay if you need to bend that lifted leg. Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale. And exhale. We'll release the left foot down and go to strap. Take a moment and just relax the shoulders. Exhale. We'll bend both knees and inhale, arms up. Utkatasana. This chair pose. Stay for the exhale. Breathe in. Breathe on out. Inhale. Exhale, hands down. So two options. Some of you might prefer just to hang out in a more restorative Malasana squat. If you want to go for Bakasana, your crow pose, we're trying to lift the knees as high as you can on the upper arm. 
ones, right? Now, some days I can get my knees up higher, others not so much. We do want to draw the chest energy forward. So, guys, you do not have to lift your feet. So, say a crow pose is something you want to try. You do not have to lift the feet today. Sometimes it's just baby steps, and what you want to do is try to lift your hips and energize the heart center forward and upward. When you really focus on the chest moving forward and up, you can see the potential for your feet to lift, but that might not happen today. Maybe it's one foot at a time. Maybe it's no feet at a time. Keep breathing wherever you are. And then take your time. We're going to come back down facing dog. Make sure you're spreading your fingers, root your knuckles down. So, you know, for healthy wrists, we definitely want to root all the knuckles down, especially the base index knuckle. A lot of times people tense up the knuckles, not so great for the wrist. Try to stretch the hands the best you can. Take one more breath in. Stay with the breath out. Now we're going to drop the knees to the floor. And we're going to work on the final and fourth shape, right? So um, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's like we're trying to work with the shape in all different orientations. We're trying to work with that warrior three shape, different orientations, right? So if you don't have a headstand practice, it's fine. Sometimes just listening, I just really want to stress this, will help you later on in your practice. So everything does not have to happen today. I do feel like the mind absorbs this information and that it might be available to you later on, if not today. If some of you have access to a wall and you'd like to use the wall, you can do that. If some of you like to practice in the middle of the floor, you can. So this might be the hardest one. Again, we're working with that. Remember we did this very, very beginning of class, right? This is the shape we're working with, but now we're taking it into headstand. So, Take your time. There's no rush whatsoever. We're going to work with your socks in a one alignment in the other. So you just kind of make a little triangle with your forearms. Crown the head comes to the floor. And then see if you can lift your hips up. Right? So again, if this is not your thing today, do not worry. So we're going to try lifting the right leg up. Now, what we're trying to do is lift the left leg up. So we're doing this warrior three shape in Sirsasana. I don't even know if mine's perfect. It very well may not be, but I'm trying to make sure the right leg is very vertical, right? Left leg really horizontal. Sometimes the legs wing out to the sides. Try to hug both inner thighs into your midline. Keep breathing. Keep reaching up through the right side of toes. Navel to spine helps you zip things, zip things off the navel. If you're by a wall, you can do the same exact thing with your right leg on the wall. Rest whenever you need. Okay, take a couple more breaths if you still have it. If you need to rest in child's pose, go ahead. Right, so say if you have the wall, you really theoretically could just sort of you know, because I know it can be a little bit of a challenge. You can practice the shape with the wall supporting you. All right, so just a couple more breaths, play around with that. All right, so those of you that might need a little more time for this side and make sure you just the right leg up so we stay even. Now, in inversions, in arm balances, Sometimes it's a little tricky to maintain that even quality of breath, right? That's where the discipline comes in and just the mindfulness for trying to maintain the even quality breath, even though we might be coming into a more challenging pose. It's all rest in child's pose. Right? Forget about that side for a moment. We'll just break it out before we go to the other side. Let's lift onto all fours. We're going to inhale, cow pose. And again, exhale, round the back, cat pose. Inhale through the nose, nice intentional breath. 
Right, so all pranayama means is breath control in Sanskrit. Exhale round. Right, you're controlling your breath. Inhale, count. Exhale, round the back, cat. One more time. Inhale, count. And then exhale, round the back for cat. Now we're going to inhale to the neutral spine and work with the other side. So, admittedly, right, we have favorite sides. Sometimes we feel more confident with the right leg up, others with the left leg up. I myself can be a little wobbly lifting the left leg up, so don't laugh if I lose my balance, right? But we're going to try the same thing. Interlace your fingers. Crown of the head, and I do want to stress this, actually, because sometimes I see people, you know, it's a very fine line. They'll try to bring the forehead-ish part to the floor. It's really the crown of the head, right? So if you see that difference, we don't want to be too far forward when we're placing our head. It's the crown of the head. Remember, technically headstand is Tadasana upside down. We're doing something different with the arms, but we're not doing anything weird with the neck, right? Same exact alignment as if you were reaching up through the crown of the head. It's just that in this case, you're reaching down through the crown of the head. Right, so we have lots of energies, um, different directions. Now, this time we're going to lift the left leg. Try to bring the right leg parallel to the floor. Now, again, if you want to use the wall, use the wall. Keep your thigh bones as neutral as possible. We're trying to mimic warrior three alignment, which, you know, really my left foot would be flexed because that would be the floor, probably right foot too. Keep breathing. Root through your forearms. It's not all this weight in the crown of the head. Rest as you need. Stay longer if you need, if you'd like. Right? This is developing core strength, arm strength, also confidence, because a lot of this is about overcoming fear. Rest as you need. Right, because a lot of times I'll see students who I can tell they have the strength, they have the physical ability, but it's up here in the mind, right? We have to trust ourselves. Walls, again, can come in handy, but of course it's good to practice away from the wall. So let's all meet up in child's pose. We will begin to wind down a little bit. Nice deep breaths, inhaling. And exhale. Inhale, and exhale. One more breath in. Stay for the breath out. So let's shift our right shin forward for um, pigeon breath. Back leg again should be neutral. And again, this is my style of alignment. I know there's a lot of different traditions out there, but uh, the way I was trained, we are not supposed to dump in the right hip like this. I've seen variations, but in a classical kind of Iyengar alignment, hips are even with each other, right? Now, if you can do regular pigeon and you don't have any issues, great. Take a breath in. We're going to offer something, an alternative for those of you that might need. Exhale forward. You can use a block under your forehead if your forehead does not come fully to the floor. For those of you where pigeon pose just is not your thing, you can take a very similar stretch. Ankle to knee on the back. I highly recommend you flex your feet, particularly your right foot. When you flex your foot, it helps to protect your knee and these type of hip openers. So, you know, this is not exactly the same stretch as a pigeon pose, but it's similar. We're trying to get into the glute stretch, a uh, teeny little muscles called the piriformis, right? Really great if you have back issues, guys. You know, between hamstring stretching, core strengthening, and just this kind of glute opening, it really does help people, um, you know, just relieve lower back pain. A few more breaths here. Still working with your ujjayi breathing. 
Yeah, which I might not be as intense. You know, sometimes we're really breathing so intentionally, it's really an audible sound on the exhale. You can begin to tone it down, but you're just being mindful that it's still an even quality breath, right? Your inhalations and your exhalations, same length of time. Three more deep breaths, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. Nice release as you breathe out. So let's come back, kind of maneuver your way back to child's pose. If you're on your back, don't bother. Just you know, stand on your back and gently switch sides, that ankle to knee variation. Others can just simply bring left shin forward. Now, a little note, you probably can't see my front leg so much. Some people ask, well, how much of an angle should my front leg be? That's up to you. It's up to the person, up to the flexi you know, flexibility of your body. So sometimes when you're new to pigeon, it's a very acute angle, if you will. Right, so again, a lot of this is this geometry. Others that start to become more open in the hip, they start to bring their left foot further forward. But again, you don't want to compromise the hips. So some people will say, oh, I'm trying to get my shin parallel to the front of the mat. Okay, great, if you're not going to do this. I can get my, my leg parallel to the mat, but look at my hips. No, I would want to maybe modify, bring that left foot in a little so that my hips can be you don't want to collapse, right? So take a nice breath in. And then exhale as you bow forward. And feel free to use your block. You know, if your forehead just feels like it's, it's just dangling and you want some rest, maybe a block on a higher height. Keep breathing. And you know, I do want to point out that, you know, I personally love the vinyasa practice, but it's also nice when we can wind down at the end with maybe some more yin, restorative quality poses. Being that a lot of us obviously are home, you know, maybe you take the vinyasa practice for a certain part of your day, but then maybe another part of the day you say, I'm going to pick one to three poses and just really linger in them for a good amount of time. Like in vinyasa, we tend to flow a little more, but we don't tend to hold poses for too long, but there is a benefit in holding poses for a super long time. So say after today, maybe tomorrow, you say, I'm gonna do pigeon pose five minutes on each side. You'd be surprised how much that can benefit you and just, you know, you're focusing on the breathing, you're just in one pose. It might not be as sweaty, right? But that has a certain quality too. So I like merging the tapas and like the heat of a really sweaty vinyasa class with a little bit more of a relaxing uh, yin practice as well. So three more deep breaths, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. Stay for the breath out. And then we'll just slide the hands back. Make your way into all fours. If you're one of the people on your back, let's just all meet up on all fours. And you can either take your blanket or something I like to do that I find just kind of neat is to double up or triple up the mat. You see that? I kind of just need a little extra padding. So if you're sensitive in the knees, Place your kneecaps right on that little padding. If it's not good enough, of course, use your uh, blanket. Now we're gonna tuck the toes. It's a little light back bending today. We're gonna stand up right. Stand up right on the knees, I mean. So again, thighs are vertical. So we're headed into camel pose or ustrasana. The tendency, people tend to do this, right? Or they feel like, oh my gosh, I have to reach my heels. And so they reach the heel, but then they're doing this. Take it at your own pace. It's okay if your cattle poses here and you're kind of just gently lengthening the tailbone. 
front of the pelvis forward, lifting in your heart. Your arms can dangle. This is, this is camel. If you want to take it further, sure, grab the back of your thighs. If you want to take it further, sure, grab the back of your heels, but then be mindful you're not drooping in your, your hips, right? Less of this, more of this. Spread the collarbones, keep breathing, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. Stay for the breath out. We'll inhale, lift up. And we'll just exhale, find a seat. Unravel your mat. And we're just gonna bring both legs forward. Now again, in a way, this is kind of warrior three, right? We're still working with this 90 degree angle happening. It's just that now both legs are extended. Just notice, can you sit tall and keep straight legs? If not, not to worry. Maybe you bend your knees a little bit, right? So it's just an indication sometimes of what your body might need. And I didn't mention this earlier, but this also applies to downward facing dog. Sometimes people, you know, just need a little bend in the knee just to help them lengthen the back. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, lift up and over, Paschimottanasana. You might grab your feet, you might not, right? Maybe you use your strap around your feet. Nice deep breaths, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more breath in. And we're going to exhale when we point the feet. A nice stretch. Top to the feet. And then we'll just roll onto the back. All right, so oftentimes we'll add and inversion at the very end of the class, but we did, you know, that work with the headstand. So if you absolutely, you know, if you really want another inversion, sure, you can come into shoulder stand if that's in your practice. You can also do the Korean karate legs lifted block underneath your sacrum. But if you've had enough, right, you just want to chill out, supta baddha konasana, soles of the feet touching, hands of the belly and just rest. Really ground it into the earth. Now, if you opted for shoulder stand or some inversion, take your time coming out of it and then meet the rest of the class here in Supta Baddha Kanasana. Okay, so there's so many creative ways we can sequence classes, um, especially with vinyasa and just work with different shapes. So I want to stress, it's not always about long or white. You know, sometimes, of course, we practice headstand, just very traditional, linear, both feet up. But then there are variations, right? So a lot of times in asana, we'll have like kind of what we think of as the classical version. But then there's these other variations we can do, we can play with. So, you know, next week, different sequencing. But it's just about kind of training our mind to accept change. So a lot of times people say, well, I don't understand why anything has to be so physical. Different strokes for different folks, but when you are practicing unexpected kind of directions that we're trying to ask our body to do, I feel it really also prepares our mind. You know, it's releasing blockages from the body. So again, you wanna work within your own range of motion. There's a very fine line between challenging yourself and being overly competitive. So, you know, I want to stress that. You don't want to be, you know, experiencing pain or really pushing yourself too far, but there is something we also call tapas in yoga, which is like, you know, this heat 
or, or this effort. And that's what can help us sweat, right? We're leaving some just kind of tension from the body. So let's hug the knees into the chest. Apanasana, nice hug. And then we'll extend both arms out to the sides. We'll take a breath in. Exhale both legs all the way to the right. Supine twist. Look we'll over your left arm if you can. Now, if your legs don't come to the floor, I don't want to leave out people where they come into a twist and this kind of thing happens. Take your block, pillow, blanket, something, and make a little kind of elevated floor, right? Because sometimes this is what works for people so they can really rest. If that's not for you, our five comes to the floor. Inhale, legs back up through center. And just exhale, both legs over to the left, right? Look over the right arm. Nice deep breaths here. Bring our legs back to center and then set up for your Shavasana, right? So traditionally Shavasana is taken in corpse pose. But I want to point out really Shavasana is more a state of mind, which is why they say it's the hardest asana of them all. Even though our body's not doing anything too fancy here, it's the mind that likes to keep racing. Okay, so when a thought enters, just try to let it pass like a cloud. Your best not to dwell on it. If you need support, some people use bolsters or blankets underneath their body. If you have any back issues, guys, and being flat on the, the mat just does not work for you, take a rolled up blanket or two and place it under your thighs or caps. You'll find it really relieves your lower back. If you want to rest in Shavasana longer, be my guest, right? You're in your house. You can definitely stay here longer. To end promptly, though, some of you might wish to just breathe deeply, wiggling your fingers and toes. You can hug each knee into the chest. We'll just lift the right arm up by the right ear. Just kind of forming a little pillow as you roll over onto the right side. Just a little fetal position. And we'll lift our way back up to sit. And, um, you know, I'm always open for questions. 
I know everyone's not always on every social media platform and you don't have to be, but if you are and you're on Instagram, you can follow me, Erica Robinson Yoga on Instagram and ask questions in the comments. Like I'll be sure to get back and answer any alignment questions you might have, anything like that. I'm happy to, um, you know, answer and just give some guidance. There's a few little tips on there too. I try to post somewhat regularly, right? <laughs> But uh, let's bring our hands to the heart center. And just giving thanks that you were able to make the time to do this for yourself. It's really honoring your efforts. And the light in me bows down to the light in all of you. Namaste.